We don't want the army. We don't want the gunshot in the fight. Tuesday witnesses the moment of outstanding courage, defiance by one unarmed man in the face of the Politburo's armoured might. Thursday brings the hard line in China's leadership out of the shadows. Beijing's summer of democracy turns to winter. Well, now let's go first, as we have done every night this week, to Beijing, to our correspondent, David Smith. David, could you bring us up to date with any late breaking news tonight? John, at the end of a week that has seen the army moving back and forth through Beijing, the latest has to be that early today, and it's now almost four in the morning here, the army started pulling tanks out of Tiananmen Square and moving them out to the city boundary. And this time there's been no gunfire by all accounts. It says to us here, I suppose, that the pressure's really off now and that almost in conclusion that the government is in control. That whatever the resistance there was in the army, let alone the people, uh, it's been dealt with. It's as if I sense that we're watching the entire state apparatus, the, the politicians, the army, now the secret police, get their act together um, in the past couple of days suddenly, and I don't think we should be surprised given, given Chinese um, tradition, everything is in place again and as relentless as ever. Jerry Siegel here in London, uh, you've been a China watcher for, for many years. Uh, on the Richter scale of, of Chinese upheaval, where do you put what we've seen in this last week, three weeks? Well, the last three weeks, in terms of intensity, have got to rank as number one. We haven't seen anything quite as intense as this. However, China does have a, a violent history. Um, the Cultural Revolution must rank as the most violent in the sense of rapid changes of leadership. Uh, the Great Leap Forward was the most drastic in terms of the loss of life. 25 million people died in a famine that resulted from crazy uh, policies of the leadership. But this one is so intense, it's changed so fast, and people have been killed so quickly, and policies have gone out of control so quickly that this, this in, in terms of intensity, is quite beyond anything we've seen. But is it perhaps so intense because we can actually see it in a way that perhaps we never saw the Great Leap Forward, for example? It certainly, in, uh, it certainly has helped in that sense, uh, hel has helped us understand China, that we've been able to watch it closely, we've been involved. But that's part of China's own, own problem. They have opened up to the outside world, and so when things go wrong, they can't shut us out anymore. And they're, they're part of the outside world. We're part of their politics. Let's look forward for a moment. Anything positive, or is it all negative? Well, there is an easy tendency now to be entirely uh, doom and gloom about what's happening, and, and obviously a lot is, has been terrible. You can be positive if you want to look at the fact that their conservative victory has not been complete. It looks like, although Zhao has gone, we will get a somewhat more balanced conservative party leader in Chao Shu. It is possible we will have economic reform. Deng is certainly talking about that. We will certainly not have political reform. But if China is to continue forward, I think even Deng recognizes we have to have reform of the economy. And that is still possible. We have to hope, I think, that they will at least have their senses that there's no going back. But it's ironic, isn't it? Was it not economic reform that fueled the demand for political reform? More economic reform, more political reform. Indeed, and there can be an argument now that says, well, it's going to be tough to put through economic reform, but the country is so scarred by what's happening that, in a sense, they will be dulled, the senses will be dulled. And there is a chance now that you can push things through hard. But it requires a far-seeing leadership, and this leadership perhaps is too old to see that far ahead. So who can we look to below? Very briefly. Well, I think we have this problem of Deng Xiaoping is going to die fairly shortly, and when he dies, everything is open again. And I think that's when we have to be more optimistic soon. In conclusion, David Smith uh, in, in Beijing, uh, give us a thought to close on from your experiences today. John, if I, if I think about it, I suppose it's, uh, it's a young man, uh, a student, who, who today wanted to talk to us, to be interviewed in front of a camera even though I know that he had every reason to, to fear the consequences. I don't think I was imagining it. I, I, I felt he was crossing a milestone, a, a personal Rubicon of, of sorts, something he wouldn't have done a few weeks ago. And you'll know this feeling, John. I, I went away thinking that, that everything that's happened this week, the killings and everything else, if it wasn't so tragic, it, it, it would be moving. And it was. This morning it was moving. On that note, uh, David I, Smith, we must close. That's Channel 4 News. Good evening.